Hello everybody, welcome to The Rock and the Crystals channel. My name is AJ and today let's take a look at which crystals probably shouldn't be cleaned and cleansed and submerged rather in water. Healing crystals, as they absorb a lot of energy, tend to become energetically ineffective over time, as they can even uh, compromise the energy uh, of the person handling them. For these reasons, it's extremely important to cleanse your crystals reasonably often. Yet, as important as this is, it is even more important to understand the proper cleansing methods as certain crystals require special attention. The most common way to cleanse your crystals is by utilizing natural bodies of water, such as rivers, waterfalls, oceans, and even the rain. Uh, but water is not safe for all crystals, and some may disintegrate or even create harmful reactions in water. Let's take a look at some crystals that should not be cleansed in waters, uh, as, as well as some of alternative methods for cleansing those crystals instead. Fluorite is one that will eventually over time evo uh, dissolve in water. Uh, now that will not happen very quickly, but it will eventually happen. Uh, it should not be necessarily used to infuse uh, an elixir uh, as fluorite is basically the where fluoride comes from. Now of course most of our water in cities is fluoridated to a small degree so you're not likely to have any um, major issues by you know sipping a, a little fluorite water by accident or whatever but the point is that fluorite is one that over an extended period of time can uh, slowly dissolve in water. Selenite will revert back to gypsum and eventually dissolve if, if soaked in water. Uh, astropiphyllite will entirely fall apart uh, if exposed to water. Tangerine quartz is made of iron oxide which, when exposed to water, will dissolve and ca cause the crystal rather to fade in color. Gypsum will dissolve completely if exposed to water for too long, and opal is typically safe in water unless it is porous, in which case it may actually crack over time. Now, keep in mind that these effects will not necessarily happen instantly, but this is sort of in most cases, what may occur in, after extended periods of water exposure, just to keep in mind. Lipidolite, lipidolite rather, it may become damaged uh, or the color may fade if it's merged in water. Azurite may become brittle or lose its luster if it comes into contact with the water. Apatite can be washed briefly but will become damaged if left for long periods of time. Uh, halite, Halite, rather, halite is much, much like salt, is extremely soluble and will actually dissolve in water. Malachite, as a copper mineral, should not be used to infuse water as it could become poisonous. Turquoise, because of its porosity, will absorb water and crack over time. Uh, Labradorite may be rinsed but its luminosity may be affected if it's, uh, if it's submerged for too long of periods of time. Again, you're going to be needing to submerge it for extended periods of time for this to be an issue, but just something to keep in mind. Celestite may be washed, but may lose some of its color as well if left for too long. Pyrite, because of its iron content, will rust and fade if it comes into contact with water, again for too long. <laughs> Hematite will rust and may become brittle if it comes into contact with water as well. Now, some alternative cleansing methods if your crystal is not water friendly. Uh, you may smudge smoke your crystals to cleanse them. It is a great alternative way uh, uh, to cleanse your crystals as it provides the same benefits by removing negative energies without the water. The most popular smudge stick to use is, is sage, but uh, Palo Santo, rosemary, bay leaves, or basil are also great. Um, light the smudge stick as you would normally and waft the smoke around your crystals as, as if bathing them in the smoke until you are satisfied that the energy of the crystal feels the way it should feel. It's simple, safe, effective, and it smells pretty nice too. <laughs> Sound cleansing is recently a more popular method, uh, but it has been around for centuries uh, in many different cultures from around the world. 
Bells and singing bowls are effective tools for cleansing crystals that are not water safe, as the tones reverberate through space and the vibrations clear negativity and help to banish malicious entities. In this cleansing method, you would find a bell or singing bowl that has a tone that you resonate with to balance your energetic frequencies as well as the energetic frequencies of your crystal. Ring the bell gently a few times or play the singing bowl until you can feel the energy in your space become light and less chaotic. Sound cleansing can actually be done as often as you like. Moonlight is a powerful cosmic cleanser that has a positive effect on us as well as our crystals. Each moon phase brings different energies, but the full moon is known, uh, rather best known for its ability to release and relinquish anything that you no longer want to hold on to. In the same way, you would charge your moon water, uh, set your crystals on, a, on your windowsill or any surface where the moonlight can touch it. Leaving it out overnight for a few days is a great way to remove any stagnant or negative energy built up in your crystals. Selenite, as, you, as I mentioned, rather, is a water-sensitive crystal, but it's also a cleansing crystal of its own right. It is one of the only two crystals that has the ability to cleanse and charge other crystals as uh, well as itself. Keeping your crystals on a selenite plate ensures that they are constantly cleansed of any negative energy. But you can also simply touch a selenite crystal to a, another crystal to purify its energy. Selenite doesn't require much cleansing itself, but when it does, you can use any of the mentioned non-water cleansing methods. You can win a crystal by leaving a comment and letting us know what you love about crystals. Also be subscribed to this channel. We give away a new crystal with every video upload. If you're looking to buy crystals, we have some amazing deals available at our crystal shop. Link in the description below. Grab yourself a free copy of the Crystal Compendium, which has over 250 crystal definitions. Link in the description below. Join our crystal affiliate program if you'd like to make money selling crystals. We pay a 22 2% commission for referred sales. Enroll in our crystal healing course. Link in the description below along with the link to our affiliate program and check out the Crystal Meanings app in both the App Store and Google Play Store for crystal meanings and definitions at your fingertip. It's absolutely free, pun intended. And of course, be subscribed to this channel because we learn something about crystals every single day. And who doesn't love learning about crystals? Okay, have a great day.